One of the most common questions I get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did for our viewers on YouTube is create a free mentorship course that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they get started. But please take note that there is limited seating every single week. So please reserve your spot at myinvestingclub.co. Link is in the description. But anyway, yeah, so we're going to be going over just, just, I mean, I call it a magic trick. These are just tips and tricks that I see that help me to execute. And these are things that I specifically look for when uh, making decisions in the trading market. And so I'll go over some of those. All right. And so, you know, if this is your first webinar, welcome. Uh, this is our table of contents. We'll go over the market sentiment as we always do. Um, then I'll open the floor to you guys. You know, you guys can just throw tickers at me and I'll, you know, try to review the stocks that kind of went. I traded some of them. I don't remember which ones already. Um, but I traded some of them. Um, but yeah, we'll go over and kind of look, you know, with hindsight on our side, what kind of happened. We can analyze like good opportunities on the charts and where I think we're, you know, good long and short opportunities and, you know, all that stuff. Then we'll get into the, the webinar after the weekly rant. And this is a Q&A webinar. If you have questions at any time, feel free to ask them. I will try to make it. I will try to answer the questions, but if I miss it, just keep reposting it. And I'll get to it. And then we'll Q&A at the end if, if there's still questions. So let's go. All right. So like last week, right? Um, it, it, I mean, it was the, obviously it was the week before the inauguration, right? And that's like, that was, I think that's the final kind of uncertainty that was looming. And so like, we also kind of got that news that the, like the vaccine had suddenly been beef, like supposedly that the vaccine was beefing up the handle, like the, the new like European strains of the, of the coronavirus. And so that, that initially it put a little fear in the market, but then like we got that tweet, uh, those tweets from, from the company saying, no, it's, we're all good. And then we saw the market shot up like that day or the next day. And so, you know, the market liked that stability and, you know, like we were basically showing strong bullishness in that slow up, slow choppy uptrend that I thought that we would have um, because, and I thought it'd be choppy because there was still one more looming thing, right? We still have, the January 20th inauguration, and we still have opening up too. I think that's also in the horizon. You know, we have to open up slowly and who knows, you know, as we slowly open up more, like there's always that lingering fear of like, what if there's more cases? Are we going to lock that? Like, I think that's slowly and slowly and slowly fading farther and farther away. Um, but it's still lingering. And I think that's what's given that choppiness in addition to the fact that we're at all time highs um, when GDP obviously does not reflect that. So there's that shakiness right up here. Um, but I thought after the January 20th inauguration that like, you know, after yesterday that the spy could have a less choppy time as we have less uncertainty in our midst. And so, um, um, that's what I thought, you know, I didn't see the spy going anywhere. It's clearly, you know, I didn't see it going to four and I meant in this week, right? I just thought choppy up until there's a smoother path. And so this week, you know, it's almost like a buy the new scenario. Now, buy the news isn't really a phrase used by traders because, um, the, 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 the phrase is sell the news. Nobody, when you buy the news, you normally lose. Right. But in this scenario, I feel like the market got what it wanted. The market got what, uh, and what I mean by wanted is uncertainty removed. Um, the market got what it wanted. And so because there was lingering uncertainty, there was still some pricing that had not happened, some stability pricing that had yet to come. And basically, I think that that's, that's what happened. Instead of being a sell the news, we were buying the news. And that's because normally stocks or you know, whatever it is, whatever the asset price is, it could even be an index fund like the SPY, right? Whatever the price, we talked about this last week, right? Like about pre-pricing, when, when stocks like to pre-price moves, right? Sell the news is when, you know, the news happens and we're already at the correct price and, and profit taking has to happen. In this case, on the SPY, there wasn't that much pre-pricing, you know, like, see here there wasn't too much pre-pricing going on right like i mean you know we were pulling back we we, we were already showing hesitation which is not necessarily you don't normally see that in sell the news scenarios normally in sell the news scenarios you get something maybe like this right you, you get something like this this kind of stuff up 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 you get the news and then it sells off i, I don't know what this was i forget already but it, it's only like da, 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 sell off right this is more of a sell the news style chart when we slowly grift up and we have cells along the way, that's not really necessary. That doesn't look like a sell the news scenario. And 
And that's why I don't feel like we had the need to sell off once the uncertainty was removed. It was the first announcement. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. Oh, it was. No, you're right. And of course. Yeah. So it's like leading up, leading up, leading up and sell the news. Right. And so this is like, I, I didn't even know that, but yeah, this is a sell the news. I just picked it because it looked like one on the chart. This is a sell the news. Whereas this doesn't really look like it's just choppy, slow, grindy up. That doesn't show a whole lot of pre-pricing. That just shows a trend. Right. And so um, in this particular case, I believe that, you know, the anticipation for the peaceful transfer, right? The anticipation for the tr peaceful transfer, not the recovery. I still think that the recovery, I think that the recovery has been majorly pre-priced. Right? I think the recovery, I mean, that's what we're at all time highs and GDP doesn't follow. That in innately shows you that we have pre-priced uh, the future already. That's for the recovery. But for the peaceful transfer, I don't think that we necessarily, like there was still some of that debate there. We got the news, we got the spike up on the spy yesterday and I think we held on to it today, right? Yeah, we held on to it today. So that shows confidence. Um, and now, you know, you know, I think that it was kind of subdued based off, you know, current, you know, unfortunately, you know, political politics plays a role in the market, right? But off, you know, the, clerk, the current high political climate, uh, recent events that are going around, um, I think some of that barrier has been broken. Hey guys, my name is Tosh Bradley. I'm one of the head mentors and monitors at My Investing Club. If you have any questions about getting started in trading, getting started in MIC, MIC in general, text me at 213-458-5997. This is not a robot. It is me directly on the other end of my business line and uh, we'll get you in the club. We also have special promotions going on that I can get to you depending on your trading needs. Hit me up. Back to the video. Um, and now I think that we can actually see a little rally. I, I don't think I don't think it's uncommon to see rallies after uncertainties have been quelled. Uh, and the things that are on my mind is $400 psych level. Now I don't, I, I think like, you know, any good news that comes out in the next, it doesn't really matter what it is. Like the market likes to combine good news and really push. That's what the market likes to do. Like if there's, there's this going on, uncertainties removed and we got good news and blah, blah, blah. We're all at all time highs. Let's break out. Let's buy, let's go 400 magnet. Right. And so, like any kind of good news right now, I think is going to be stronger just because, you know, we're, you know, like it almost feeds off, you know, good news has a momentum effect and, you know, any good news that comes out, like in the next week, I think it kind of pushes us up. I think we could have a little bit of a rally. The thing is, is that I do think a $400 test would be premature, but like, I think like, I, I easily think we could get into the three nineties. Where are we at? Three to four. I think we could get into the three nineties in the next week or two for sure. I do think it would be premature and it would pull back. Um, but just, you know, we're in, you know, like it's a momentum market. I think news could fuel uh, a move up. So that's what I would be expecting. And, you know, of course, barring any, anything huge, that's what I see. And anyway, and so last week in the small cap market, right? The thing was, what's an offering, right? What, what was an offering? It didn't even matter. Stocks were offering it. And I, I, bingo did it's like, I think bingo had its fifth bingo of offerings for the week. Um, yes, yeah, SCNS offered, bingo offered, FDFT offered, everything offered. And, and, and stocks are just it, brushing it off and creating new runners or using the same ones and using those as dips. Um, so that was the theme last week, right? And so last week, I guess that like, because that Bitcoin set back, this market, like, and I know it's, I'm going to say it could either have gone up or down, but normally the market tends to follow this buy, sell, dead kind of market. And so we were kind of starting to head into, head into said that, but I did think that this time could have been a little bit different. Um, I, I really thought the day twos um, were going to tell the story last week. Like I thought that the, the this week day twos were going to tell the story. If these this week day twos gapped in crap, then yeah, we would hell, head into that sell market the following week. But if the day twos continued, then instead of turning that corner into sales market, I think that we would get a little bit stronger. And this is kind of what happens. Like every, it's almost like a stock chart. Every time it's supposed to crash, if it doesn't, it makes a new leg higher. And so like now I, we were, we're in a stronger buyer's market, I think, than we were in last week. Um, so, and I said, what shorts really need to see in order to see that seller's control market, and you guys who have been with MIC long enough now know, you guys can truly tell the difference. This is a buyer's market compared to August, you know, July, August, September. That shit was a fucking seller's market, right? Like everything that gapped up just fucking sold, right? And now you guys, you know, 
if you have survived long enough, you guys can really see the difference between buyer sentiment and seller sentiment. I mean, you, it, literally, this is just buy, 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 buy. And so what shorts really need to see, like one or two major, I mean, like major fails, right? And I still think that's true before we see the shorts market again. And I, and I do think that, um, I do think that that, you know, kind of that, uh, that market kind of reigned supreme. And so, or that, that premonition like held true. And so this week, <clears throat> this week, the theme of the market is take a number because I mean, literally there's too many runners to go around. There's, I mean, there's, there's just, there's literally just too much, too many runners. And like, you can't watch them all. Like I, I literally like, I have no, I, 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 had, I have no way of like keeping track of everything. So you really have to work on your narrowing down game this week in small cap land. Like I forgot like this today, I, I mean, this could just be me, but I, I actually forgot about OBLN. Why? Because we had ADTX, we had, um, B, I've been saying it wrong all day, BBIG, BBIG, right? That's the way I remember it, BBIG. We had BBIG, ADTX, we had that, um, gosh, what was it? I'll think of, I'll think of it. Um, yeah, we had, we had all of these stock, Gene, that, that's what it was. We had, yeah, Gene, um, ADTX and B big right at the open and right. And, and, and like, those are the main three and you can see like, there is still opportunity if you're a short seller, but you have to pick the loser. You have to pick the loser. And it's, and, and one thing that you have to be careful of as a short seller in this market is picking the loser too early. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't be picking the loser in this market until well after the first 30 minutes. Like it's going to take 30 minutes before we finally give up. And, and we can look at Gene. And I think I called out in Gene. I think I called it out at 1015 is when I finally na called out the nail in the coffin, right? I think, what time was it? Lola Trader. How do I check here? What time did I, I'm just curious, like what time I did it. Shared in Maine. Let's see. Jeez. I'm gonna have to move this over. What's going on here? I don't know why it looks so weird. Yeah, so okay, so 515, that's 1015 market time. All right, so Gene so far the loser to ADTX and BBIG. I didn't call that until 1015, 45 minutes after, because Let's fix this back here. Okay. So 45 minutes after, and what did the, I want to know what the chart looked like here. The 1015, you can see that it, like Gene, like it, when the stock's still doing this, this stock can still come back, guys. I Like, right, like the thing is, is that ADTX and VBIC were strong, so you can start to assume that Gene might be the loser here, but I wouldn't have like sized the fuck in yet because like it was starting to look like the loser, but like this could easily have, have gone here or like this higher low holds and then it goes. But I waited until kind of this fail, this 1015 mark right here. Where is it? 1015. Yeah. So I waited until this failed and then failed to bounce before I even thought that this was over. Well, all right, guys. Solid, solid stuff. I'm going to stop the record before I lose it. I'm just so terrified. Right on, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.